Come, come over, come to the light. <laughs>
Hello, everyone, and welcome to Maryville University Hockey Center, side of tonight's matchup between the McKendree Bearcats and your Maryville Saints. This is the Maryville Saints pregame show brought to you by Wausau Homes. Well, Will, it's going to be an exciting game as we had last night. 5-4 to four was the final despite Maryville getting out to a big lead. Obviously, Coach Hogan's troops are going to be hoping to do somewhat similar offensively, a little bit better defensively. Yeah, and I think that's just all going to – It all. I think it all is going to be getting your emotions in check because as we saw last night, this game turned – almost into a brawl at some stages there was a fight like that did happen so both teams you know have a lot of energy going towards this but it's all going to be about keeping that in check and I think that'll be the big decider of this game as you mentioned it's going to come down to emotions a lot of penalties handed out yesterday 12 power plays in total evenly split six across each side Maryville managed to utilize theirs a little bit more outscoring them two to one on the man advantage yeah, and that's something that you can take into this game going, hey, we got to limit the amount of power plays that we give to them because we only, we only scraped by that game. We had a lead, and they were coming back. So, I mean, you get six power plays. That's great, but you got it. You can't give them that many chances with a man advantage. Obviously, one of your big special teams players is always going to be your goaltender. So one of our players to watch for this evening is the starting goaltender for the Maryville Saints, and it's going to be Ed Coffey. Coffey comes in with a record of 3-2, and two, a 3.58 goals against, and a .901 save percentage. So he's been a little hit or miss here or there, but you can never fault the effort with Ed Coffey. He doesn't always get the results, but he's giving his team a chance every single time out. And it's just one of those things that with a goaltender, some of those goals you can't always do. You can't always save. You're not going to save every goal. But with Ed Coffey, you just get a lot of energy because once he makes a big save and you translate that to the other end, you want to score when he's in your goaltender. If he makes a big save, you say, okay, we got to go get one for him now. And I think that's what's going to help the team out when he's in net. And your other player to watch for this evening is going to be up top. It's Anthony Stavrow playing at a forward. Stavrow comes in with 12 goals, including one last night, which was set up on a beautiful give-and-go with Damian Karinji. That gives him 20 points on the season. Yeah, Stavrow, just, he, got his, he got a goal last night looking to continue it. I mean, this is the last game before Nationals for these guys. So it's just one of those... You want to have a lot of momentum. You don't necessarily want to have a scrappy game before Nationals. You want to just have a good, clean, not a lot of penalties. You could win 1-0 or 2-1. As long as you as long as long you limit the amount of mistakes, I think that'll be the key of going forward for this team. So 60 minutes, perhaps more, for the Maryville Saints before they head off into postseason play. We'll see what they have in store for us here this evening. It's the Bearcats against the Saints coming up on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. This has been the Wausau Homes pregame show. We thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Puck Drop. Wausau Homes, we understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three-step building process so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wausau Homes we build your way with a firm price and on time. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans. There's a super fun city, a quick getaway, where there's so much excitement you need more than a day. St. Louis is the stop for non-stop fun, so much fun for your family, infinity plus a ton. It's got works of wonder, thanks to wow your brains, an amazing pet performance, all aboard on the train. Some museums are historic, some hit the right blues note. Maybe catch a card game whenever paddles your boat. Yeah, St. Louis is the stop for non-stop fun. Visit us at explorestlouis.com for your chance to win a weekend of non-stop fun. Visit us at explorestlouis.com for your chance to win a weekend of non-stop fun. Can you turn the main feed down a little bit? Oh, I guess I can do it. Oh, baby.
but it teaches us this, that impossible challenges must be faced and overcome. And the reward is joy. And it will always be that way. And now that sport is back, don't waste these chances. Play with more heart, even more fire, and hope that does not end. Seek out what scares you and let your body do what it loves. Nobody knows what the future holds. Nobody knows what will come our way. So honor every breath and respect every chance. Opportunities will come and we must be ready. This is a message for those who want to get a degree online on top of everything going on in their lives. Here at Maryville University, we think you're brave. For nearly 150 years, we've been bravely disrupting higher education by putting students first. And now we're bringing this high quality education online. An education developed alongside the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association. Gentlemen, welcome to the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside my partner tonight, Todd Panula, as we get set for the McKendree Bearcats coming in and taking on your Maryville Saints. Todd, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm excited for this last regular season game here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. The Saints are looking to top off their regular season with a win. So let's go over the starters before we get things started. In the cage tonight for the Saints, Ed Coffey. And on the back end, Cole Bonnet with Josh Tack. And up front, Jack Harrison, the captain at center. And on his wings, Cole Mudra and Christian Alvagran. As the game has started, the puck has been dropped. And the Saints win the draw. Josh Tack inside of his own blue line. Stretch pass off the stick of Jack Harrison. He'll go down for an icing. 10 seconds, no, 11 seconds into the first period. So let's look at how things went last night. The Saints almost blew it, Todd. They had a, a couple couple goal lead and it ended up being a 5-4 win. And the Saints are now 4-1 against McKendree this year. Yeah, Maryville was up by as much as four goals, four to nothing. And then they, in the third period, it just kind of fell apart a little bit. They got a little bit lax, careless with the puck. They took their foot off the gas. Well, that's one of the things that the Saints need to Zone in on tonight is just keeping the pedal to the metal, especially if they get an early lead. Josh Tack trying to go up the boards. Sent back down by Lundquist. Pinned up against the boards is Cole Bonnet on his backhand behind the cage. Throws it to Tack. Pass intercepted. Blocker down by Ed Coffey. Another one to the net, and Coffey's there to smother it. Little skirmish in front of the net as that is Cole Bonnet cleaning up the trash in front. 19-17 left to go here in the first period. Two shots for the McKendry Bearcats. And that's not the way you want to start if you're Maryville defensively because they gave away a great chance in front. Good blockers saved by Coffey to bail them out. Ed Coffey comes in with a 358 goals against average and a 901 save percentage as he'll leave the puck for his defenseman. Nate Simpson will spin around and throw it around the boards. It's going to be kept in, though, by McKendry. A shot on, goes off the skate. Rorig comes in. His shot, that one goes over the glove of Coffey. And Maryville going the other way. Stretch pass, can't connect with 
Karenji, but he gets the puck back, a shot on, and that one will sail into the netting with 18.46 left to go here in the first period. No score, but McKendry, a couple opportunities, like you said, from some defensive mistakes from Maryville. Yeah, they're not even a full 90 seconds in here, and Maryville's looked a little bit disjointed, a little bit on their heels defensively, but good to get that push into the offensive zone. You get a shot off, off the goaltender's shoulder. Uh, you force a save, and that's basically what you need to do, get things rolling on the offensive end. And on the other side, you mentioned getting a shot on net against McKendry. Wesley Werner in net for the Bearcats as he comes out of his net and will throw one around the boards. Nikita Sokoff picks it up. McKendry enters into the zone. Shot on, and that one's into the glove of Ed Coffey. Oh, a hit after the whistle. Some extracurriculars, and it looks like it's going to end up being a penalty against Maryville. So early on, the Saints will head to the box. Let's see who the call is on. They're trying to figure out right now. Looked like the whole team went to the bench. They didn't want to go into the send bin. Right, everybody was trying to, maybe if I just skate off to the bench, they won't <laughs> notice me. But this was kind of the start. I think Maryville was fearful of because they've, they've come out, they're looking a little bit sluggish. Uh, it is a little bit of a different start time, 5.30. Sometimes that can disrupt your flow, but they took a lot of unnecessary penalties in last night's game, and you can see that McKendry's trying to draw them in again, and thus far they've succeeded. So that's Trevor Henson who will serve the minor. As McKendry sets things up, they go the umbrella. They move the puck around to that bumper spot. That's Portal who's in that bumper roll. Down low, shot out front, a nice save by Coffey. Scooped up by Maryville, and they'll send it down deep. Out of his net is Werner, and he will leave the puck. So Ed Coffey, so far, some great saves to keep Maryville from going down by one early in this first period. Amaregi with it. He'll leave it for Brown. Brown feeds one to the middle, goes off a stick. Kemmer's there on his backhand, able to muscle it out of the zone. McKendry will regroup just inside their blue line. Joey Gaggin there showing some pressure. Brown with the puck. He'll throw it off the boards. Amaregi hits the blue line, spins. It's left for Brown. Brown feeds it back to Amaregi on the half wall. He'll throw it down low. McKendry trying to set things up. They go back down low. Lots of moving parts for this McKendry power play. Reader from the point, a shot on. Coffey able to smother it. Can't completely get a shot. And it goes in. Amaregi puts it in one to nothing as Ed Coffey could not smother the puck. Could not get the save. Looked like a pinball machine down there, Todd. Yeah, that's one that Coffey's going to want to have back. He made the initial stop, looked like an easy save, but the puck just bounced a little bit too far in front of him. He tried to kind of bring it back with the stick, didn't get the glove over the top of it. Now that the defenders really helped out either because they thought that Coffey was going to be able to cover it up, and it's just one of those mistakes that ends up costing you. It looked like that one didn't even leave the ice, just stayed right on the ice and went five hole. So we'll see how Maryville responds here with 16.45 left to go in the first period. McKendry with the puck down low. Goes behind the net. Losing his stick but grabbing it was Noah Scrum. The Saints able to exit out of the zone as Jaden Bexty can't connect with the pass. Boudreaux leaves it for Bexty. Bexty loses his handle on it and Wickman will throw it across the ice. Goes off the stick of Boudreaux. Boudreaux looks to the front, and that pass to Dunville, unable to connect. The shot on. Oh, did that hit off the post, Todd? I think it must have based on the angle that it came back to. Cole Bonnet at the point. Feeds it for Boudreaux. He throws one on. And it looks like McKendry now taking a penalty, and Maryville will head to the power play. A tripping call. So this is a perfect opportunity, and obviously, Maryville needs to keep their composure here so they made sure to stay on the power play, but 
Maryville scored a couple power play goals last night. They scored, in fact, on their first two power plays given. And then, as I say that, they're going to put Dunville in the box as well. So well, that's Dun- all kind of washed out. Yeah, so the, that original call was the tripping call. And Dunville, after the play, shoved one of the McKendry players. I couldn't get a, a look of, of who it was. But that will basically eliminate the power play. That a power play coming for about a couple seconds, and then boom, just like that. So it's four on four. Alvagran will leave it down for Cole Mudra. He loses the puck. Alvagran picks it back up in the slot, loses the handle. He'll spin off, leaves it for Mudra on his backhand. Mudra up to the point to Henson, over to Stavro. Stavro is shot, goes off the stick into the corner. Mudra. Tries to leave it for Alvagran. And McKendry will throw it around the boards. So we're seeing a push from Maryville after giving up that early first period goal. McKendry capitalizing on the power play. But a lot of open space now for these teams. A four on four for about a minute and 15 more seconds. Here's Anthony Stavro. Hits the red line with speed. Stavro tries to feed it. Over to Jens Juliuson, can't connect. McKendry going the other way. In now, Nikita Sokoff, a breakaway, shot on, and Ed Coffey makes the save. 15 minutes on the dot left to go here in the first frame. Just over a minute left to go in the four on four. Yeah, right now the Maryville Saints need to be thanking their goaltender, despite the fact that he would like to have that goal back. He's really bailed them out of a couple different situations, and just the composure doesn't seem to be there right now for the Saints. So Coach Hogan talking with the officials. They're ready to go. Puck comes to Richardson. Richardson a shot on, and that one goes into the netting. Richardson comes in with 12 points on the year, leads the team for McKendry. And he tacked on a goal last night as well. Yeah, he was a big reason why they started to come back in that game and made it a nail-biter there at the end. So Josh Tack, the defenseman, will chip it in. Goes after his own dump in, but it's coming the other way, and it's off the glass. Racing back is Cole Bonnet. Inside his blue line, it's picked off. Richardson tries to chip it by. Brown able to keep it in, but he turns it over as Tack will go to his backhand behind the net. Wheels out of his own zone, feeds it to Bonnet. Bonnet hits the red, hits the blue, tries to feed it. Bonnet staying with it on his backhand. He spins, still has the puck in the slot, waits, shoots. The puck is loose, and Werner's able to lay on top of it with 14.09 left to go here in the first period. Excellent work ethic right there by Cole Bonnet to at least get the shot on net after doing a little dipsy-doo right inside the blue line. And yeah, we've seen the defenders from Maryville do that the past couple days. We saw Trevor Henson stick handling put the puck through somebody's legs and pick it up on the other side now bonnet showing the stick handling skills and got a good shot off as well yeah this defense core i know we talk a lot about the defensive play of this team but they are not shy about stepping up into the play and trevor henson i mean it seems like he just glides through the neutral zone and he'll step up when he thinks he has a good opportunity to create some offense So, puck is one. Phil Kimmer gloves it. He's tied up against the boards. Prexler comes out into the slot. A shot on, and that one goes off a body. And another whistle. So, 13.47 left to go here in the first. You know, the net was dislodged because it didn't seem like it from our vantage point. So, I (laughs) was wondering why the whistle came. That's the only uh, disadvantage to this rink. It's a beautiful facility, but the nets seem to be jarred loose pretty easily. Yes, that is one thing that we have touched upon all season. Lately, though, it hasn't been too much of a problem as compared to the beginning of the year. But still, especially when you have something going in the offensive zone. Shot by Simpson, just wide. Kemmer pinches in on his forehand. Throws it back down below the net. Prexler and Charche battling for it. Big hit, 
Quentin Stemfel lifts the stick, keeps the puck in, throws it down deep. Prexler, he had his head up the whole way, but that pass went off the skate. Another penalty coming. Looks like a high stick. Yeah, they're going to get Noah scrum on this one. And again, the Saints need to separate themselves, take the power play this time. <laughs> but uh, scrum kind of got, <clears throat> excuse me, tied up with uh, one of the Maryville forwards and just kind of spun around, stick came up. Referee was right there, no choice but to make the call. So perfect opportunity for the Saints to knot this game up at one. Two minutes to do so. Comes up to the blue line, a nifty move, but that pass from Anthony Stavro goes off his skate and out of the zone. Alvagran leaves it for Stavro. Stavro will dump it in. Going in on the four check, Alvagran and Bexty. Bexty throws it back up to the point. Stavro to Boudreaux, back to Stavro. Leaves it for Bexty. Bexty at the top for Stavro. They create the umbrella. Boudreaux in, shot. Rebound, backhand, oh, what a save. It comes loose. Werner able to get back up. Stavro down low for Bexty. Over to Boudreaux. Boudreaux, shot, goes off the skate. Redirected, and McKendry able to send it back down deep. A couple great opportunities for the Saints. They're unable to capitalize. A big save by Werner. But you love the way they worked the puck around. They were getting good attempts on goal, forcing good saves. I mean, that was a... Spectacular save that denied them the goal. Prexler's pass is an errant one, and we'll head back the other way due to an icing call. Like you said, Todd, they were moving the puck. I mean, it was effortlessly, and they weren't forcing passes either. They weren't forcing any plays to where sticks could be in the lane, and just a, a couple big saves by Warner, uh, some block shots as McKendry wins the draw. There's a block shot by Jack Harrison. We've seen that a couple times this season. Jack Harrison on his forehand loses the puck, and it goes down into the Maryville zone. Coffee out of his cage. He'll make the stretch pass up to Jack Harrison to hit off the stick of Damian Karenji, but it's down into the zone. McKendry gets it and throws it back down. 30 seconds left to go in the Saints power play. 11.40 left here in the first. Henson. His pass goes off a of body. No icing call. It's kept in by Stavro. His backhanded pass can't connect. And now Nordlander in. Nordlander spins. Karenji's there as Ivasenko couldn't connect with that Nordlander pass. Harrison hits the blue line. Harrison on his forehand, leaves it for Stavro. Stavro backhanded Karenji. Looks like it hopped up on him. And now McKendry going the other way, a two-on-one. Back-checking is Jack Harrison, and Scrum can't connect. Cole Bonnet, he'll leave it. As Cole, or is that Joey Gagan tried to drag it behind him? McKendry enters into the zone. They throw it into the bench, and we'll have a whistle. So Maryville unable to capitalize on their power play, but... You saw some promising things as they moved the puck around really, really well. Yeah, they looked really good on the first shift of the power play. Had a couple great scoring opportunities. Second shift, not so much. They needed to be a little cleaner with the passing on the second attempt into the zone. And there's got to be more talk when the player's coming out of the zone because they tried to get a little cute around the blue line, and that almost ended up with an odd man rush the other way. So another whistle. And it seems like when they had that first opportunity it was because they were already in the zone. And like you said, you know, they worked things around very well. But, yes, entering into the neutral zone, and that started with that errant pass that went down for an icing call. And that kind of led to, I guess you call it the demise of that power play. There's an interesting play as Werner will smother it. 10.31 left here in the first period. Still 1-0, McKendry leads. Amaregi got things going on the power play for McKendry early. As we wait for the faceoff, Jack Harrison wins it back to Cole Bonnet. Bonnet 
Feeds it over for Mudra. Mudra shot goes off the stick of Richardson and into the netting. So we'll do it again. One good thing for Maryville is I think, at least based on the body language and the speed of the game, I think McKendry kind of sped themselves a little bit with that opening push. So now it's a good opportunity for Maryville to chop away at this. So shot right off the faceoff by Mudra. And now they're throwing the body around. That goes off the stick up to the point. Bonnet stops. Shot on. Tipped wide. Another shot. Another save by Warner. That was Jack Harrison throwing one on net. Mudra throws it behind the net. And with it now is Jacob Wickman. Alvagran battling for it. He takes a man down. That was Brown. Comes up to the point. Josh Taka's shot goes wide. I think it's still loose. It is loose. It's in the crease. Still loose. No whistle yet. The whistle has been blown. The puck was still behind the net, so no one ever covered it. But, man, wouldn't you like to bang that one home? Yeah, that one has got to end up in the back of the net somehow. And you give credit to the goaltender, Werner, for sprawling across the end line, making himself as big as he could because he didn't know where the puck was. Yeah. Defenders didn't really either. They were kind of diving in the crease, and Maryville was just kind of jabbing at it, and unfortunately it, it eventually got uh, frozen enough. So now the faceoff is coming outside of the McKendry zone. Maryville trying to push the puck forward. Bouncing around in the neutral zone off a couple sticks. Charche battling for it. With him is Simpson. Comes up. Prexler unable to snag it. McKendry going into the zone. It goes off the skate. Sokov is shot on, but he did not get good enough wood on it because it fluttered into the glove of Ed Coffey. Yeah, good defensive stick came in at the last minute. Deflected that one up in the air. Coffey saw it all the way. So defensive zone face-off coming for the Saints. Charche wins it back for Jim Hunter. Good to have Jimbo back in the lineup. Nordlander trying to corral the puck. He throws one to the middle, goes off the stick of Prexler. Hunter tries to make a stretch pass. It's intercepted. Prexler takes a... I guess a block shot in the offensive zone as he's slow to get up. That one hurt. He's going to hobble back to the bench. Sokoff comes in, stops on his backhand, throws it behind the net. Pinching in is Rorick. He lays a body on Hunter. Still behind the net. Henson's there. Gagan trying to get it out. It's still on the half wall. It squirts out to the middle, and Henson will make the pass for Stavro. With Karenji. Karenji stops, throws it to Stavro. His stick was lifted. So we couldn't get one towards the net. Jim Hunter will throw it in deep. And back for it now is Ryan Reeder. Makes the stretch pass off the stick of Sokoff. And McKendry will get some fresh players out on the ice. Stretch pass off the stick of Karenji. Intercepted. And here's Scrum inside of his blue line. Throws it off the boards. Tack. Goes back for it. He'll throw it off the boards. Glove down and kept in by Scrum. Throws one towards the middle. It goes off tack. It's in front. Coffee's there. Makes the save. 7.54 left here in the first period. Still a 1-0 lead for McKendry. Trying to tack on another. But Ed Coffey with a big save. And this is similar to what we saw yesterday with McKendry capitalizing mainly on turnovers and counterattacks. You'd like to see Karinji. He was up the attacking blue line. He tried to just kind of shovel it in uh, with a ramp play off his stick. I'd like to see him catch that, hold on to it. He had teammates open on the far side of the ice, but they were just trying to get it in the zone a little too quickly. So Maryville almost turned the puck over again inside their own blue line, but it finally comes out, and they're in on the forecheck. Looked like a shot that went off the cage and redirected out front. Maryville will go D to D. It hops over the stick of Josh Tack. Tack will stop, make a move, makes the pass to Bexie. A nice play by Josh Tack to get the puck out of the zone. Bexie in. He's bumped up by two guys, but it's left for Brad Boudreaux, who wheels around the cage. Comes up top. Kemmer a shot on. Sticked wide into the corner. Behind the net. 
out front and Jens Juliuson unable to get one on net. And that's flipped in. Nordlander looking for a call, won't get one. Phil Kemmer on his backhand, leaves it for Christian Albegran. Albegran with speed on his forehand, tries to drive the net. Good defensive play. Here's Mudra. He picks the pocket of DeWarrant. Comes around the net. Simpson pinches in, shot on, and it goes into the glove of Werner. 6.36 left here in the first period. So we're seeing a glimpse of pressure from both teams, and they're coming in spurts. Yeah, they seem to come in waves, and then they get kind of mired in the neutral zone. But Maryville denied. You mentioned a great defensive play. It was Ryan Radke reached around, peeled that away from Christian Alvagran because otherwise he's in on net all by himself. And we've seen Alvagran come in on that side and just put it right below the bar in. So you have to think that could have been a 1-1 game if not Ryan Radke with the good defensive stick. So that'll go down for an icing as McKendry just trying to clear the zone off the glass, but a little too much, and we'll go back into the McKendry zone due to the icing. So a new defensive unit coming on the ice for the Saints. Jim Hunter and Trevor Henson. Mudra, shot on. A rebound comes up to the point. Hunter, his shot blocked. Amaregi uses his body, big body, and barrels over Jim Hunter. Hunter's back in position as Henson fakes the board play, goes behind the net, and will now skate it through the neutral zone. Hits the red line, dumps it in deep. There's Mudra on the wall. He takes the hit, has the puck off the skate. Thought it might have went in, but comes up to the point, hops over the stick of Trevor Henson. Richardson, he'll poke it in. Pass up to Christian Albegrand. Jack Harrison, he just drew a penalty. So a power play coming for the Saints. Comes up top, Henson a shot. The redirect in, a nice save by Werner as Cole Mudra was right in front looking for the deflection. He got it, but it did not get past Werner. 5.39 left here in the first period and the Saints are heading to the power play once again. Yeah, second power play of the game. They need to capitalize on this one. But the interesting thing about this one, Brown goes to the box for McKendry. But I was honestly going to just about say that the officials were letting a lot of stuff go <laughs> as long as it wasn't really disrupting play. And then by the letter of the law, that was a slash. But given the physicality that we've seen between these two teams, it was a little on the lighter side. But nevertheless, a uh, Maryville with a good opportunity to capitalize. I was a little surprised when the referee put his hand up. It seemed to come rather quickly. I think he saw the motion and just decided immediately it was going to be a penalty. Harrison definitely had speed and, and was definitely beating that defender of McKendry, and that was that was Brown who, like you said, took the penalty. Pass out front. That one's intercepted by Ivasenko. He'll hit the blue line, makes a move with speed. Pokes one, tries to get it to Nordlander, but Bexty's there. Bexty tied up with Nordlander, but Cole Mudra able to support. Brad Boudreau going to settle things down. I think that's exactly what they need to do. As they make the pass, it goes off the stick of Karenji. He'll throw it down deep. Mudra's there behind the net with support. Jack Harrison, and coming in is Brad Boudreau. Boudreau. Fed it to Mudro, who went back to Boudreau. Boudreau comes up with it now. Stavro is shot on. That one's high. And the whistle's been blown. That was a quick shot by Anthony Stavro. And a nice save by Werner. It must have gone up into the netting. It, it seemed like it came back awfully quick, like it went off the glass. But the only reason I can figure that they uh, stopped play is that it actually hit the net. And that's, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. It, it definitely looked like it just went right off the glass. But that, that was a quick shot by Anthony Stavro, and I was not expecting that to be a, a high one, especially with all the bodies in front. Thought it might have been a low shot looking for the rebound. We've seen Warner, for the most part, give up a, a few rebounds that he probably wish he hadn't. But luckily for him, no goals have gone past the goal line, so we remain one nothing. Maryville looking to tie things up. 4.40 left here in the first period. Shots are 11-10. Maryville 
And Amaragi is now in the sin bin. So a five on three for Maryville. I'm not sure what, what had just transpired, Todd. I know the referee gave like the timeout signal, so I'm not sure what that stands for. I'm not accustomed to that being called as a penalty, but I have to figure that Amaregi was saying something, either that or it's a, a bench minor and Amaregi's just serving it. But fantastic opportunity now for Maryville up by two men. So a sh shot on by Harrison. Jens Juliusen up top to Henson. Henson back down low to Juliusen, a five on three for the Saints. Shot on, they score! Trevor Henson ties the game one to one. A five on three power play for the Saints. They capitalize and Trevor Henson has his third goal of the season. A fantastic goal by Henson. Not a lot of power behind it, but he placed it right at the height that is perfect for that kind of shot. If there's a deflection, it's gonna change paths and go downward. If not, then all of a sudden he's utilizing the screens that were in front, whether it was defenders or his teammates, and a seeing eye shot managed to come in on the near side. You had to think with all the opportunities the Saints have had in this game, just throwing pucks to the net, good things happen when you just get one on net, and Trevor Henson capitalizes on the power play, and Maryville has an opportunity to make it a 2-1 game as they still remain on the power play. Puck comes behind the net. Juliuson kicking at it, goes off the glass. Henson unable to keep it in. Under a minute 30 left here in the power play. Five on four now as Karinji feeds it on over to Henson. Henson puts on the brakes, spins, puts it down low. Harrison's bumped off the puck, but it's left for Jens Juliuson. Back up top to Karenji. Karenji tries to force one to TJ Prexler. Goes off the skate, but Jens Juliusen is there. Karenji stops, shot, goes off the skate again, and McKendry will clear. Ed Coffey will throw one up the ice. Goes past TJ Prexler, and they call it an icing. I guess Prexler didn't touch it, but Ed Coffey had a Bearcat right in his face, so that's probably the only thing he could have done with it unless he wanted to skate around his net and do a couple moves. Right. If, if it was Johnny Massaro, we might have seen that. He might have done a pirouette <laughs> around the back of the net, but Coffey with the safe play, he had a player there. Prexler just couldn't get a touch on it. And, but as you said, it, that was the right call. So Brad Boudreau will gather the puck behind the net. As he skates up the ice. His pass goes off the stick of Ivan Senko, but Maryville able to maintain possession. Alva Grant enters into the zone, leaves it for Bexty. Bexty. Fakes that pass, throws it around the boards. Alva Grant and Boudreau, maybe a little miscommunication. No one really went for the puck, but Boudreau's there, feeds it out front, and that pass went off the stick of Alva Grant and went right over the net. Stavro backhanded over to Bexty. Bexty, slap pass, more of a wrist pass. Goes into the corner, up top again. Stavro is shot, that one sticked away into the corner. With it now is Alva Grant. Power play dwindling down. Stick is being tapped by Coffey. That shot redirected into the corner. We're back at even strength. Shot on. That one goes over the glove of Werner. Goes off the ref, and McKendry will ice it. Whistle blown. 2.27 left here in the first period. We're all tied at one. Both teams capitalizing on the special teams. Bexty getting tangled up with Amaregi and looking at the McKendry bench. I'm sure he's getting some nice words as he skates back to the bench. Well, I'm sure they're just sharing uh, recipes that they might try later on. <laughs> <laughs> McKendry wins the draw. Or more so, Maryville won the draw, but McKendry came out with it. It's in the neutral zone, and TJ Prexler goes in with Charche. Charche drops it for Bonnet. Bonnet makes a move. On his forehand to the front of the net, and oh, almost putting it in. I don't know how that stayed out. I, I figure it had to have hit the goaltender because that was looked like it was labeled for the middle of the net. An interception. Richardson with Amaregi. Amaregi will put it behind the net. 
Charche is there, stops, looks up, goes back behind the net to Bonnet. Going to reset things, Bonnet will use the boards. Good play, going in, Stenfel, Stenfel on his forehand, drags it, he's taken down! Will a penalty shot be called? It will! A penalty shot coming for Quentin Stenfel. And that's the right call too, he had a step in on goal, direct on goal too, so there was basically no opportunity uh, for the defender other than to take the man down. But it, we do have a Maryville, or excuse me, a McKendry player, I believe that's Nordlander, who collided with the boards rather awkwardly, so trainer out to see him. Well, let's hope he's okay. Is he slow to get up, but he is up. So both teams wait patiently as Quentin Stenfel was the one being taken down and he will have an opportunity to take the lead. 137 left here in the first period. Not every day you get to see a penalty shot. We see shootouts all the time in the NHL, but a penalty shot is rare and you always get excited for it. I'm never a fan of the shootout in the NHL. I'll be one of the minority in that category, but uh, penalty shots are always exciting. Here comes Stemple on his forehand, makes a move. What a goal, Quentin Stemple goes to the forehand, puts the hand to his ear, and he makes it a 2-1 game. And that's just fantastic patience there from Stemple because he just, you thought he was out of real estate. He got the goaltender to completely slide the wrong way, dragged it back, put it back onto the forehand, just easily tucked it in. That's something that you mess around with in practice, putting the stick around the puck, going 360 around the puck. And he did that multiple times going in. I thought Warner perhaps was going to poke check at him. He did not. And what a move as Cole Mudra looked like he was about to throw a body on Jacob Wickham. Alva Grand leaves it behind the net for Harrison. Harrison back to Mudra, goes off the stick, it's loose. Mudra battling for it right in front, and the whistle has been blown. And Mudra is not happy as he will head to the penalty box. So now McKendry, an opportunity to tie things up. Still a minute 10 left to go here in the first period. Seems like we've seen a lot in this first period, back and forth, back and forth. It's been really exciting, and to top it off, we saw that excellent penalty shot goal from Quentin Stemfel. Yeah, this is the kind of game that if you're a neutral fan, if you're a coach scouting things, you love to watch the back and forth. If you're a fan of either team, you're like, let's calm it down a little bit. Let's try to <laughs> seal it up. But it's not going that way. It's swinging like the clock on a, pen, or a pendulum on a clock. So Maryville able to come up with it on the faceoff. Cole Bonnet, the defenseman for the Saints, will just lightly touch it into the zone and Warner's out of his cage. Richardson's there, he'll throw it behind the net. So Daniel Nordlander, he set up shot behind the cage, gets the pass back at his blue line. McKendry looking to enter into the zone, they do. Amaregi, he had the first goal, leaves it for Richardson at the blue line. Richardson steps one, that's blocked by Jack Harrison as he has all the speed going in on Richardson, but McKendry able to come up with it. Amaregi puts on the brakes at the blue line, tries to throw it back in. It goes off the body of Trevor Henson, but back into the zone. Scrum taken down, and the referee didn't even put his hand up. And Scrum is holding his shoulder as he went down funny and was laying on the ice for a split second. He is holding his shoulder. Might have landed on that one pretty badly, and Phil Kemmer will head to the box. That's weird that the whistle came so quickly, though, because nobody was in possession of the puck. So I don't know if he thought that uh, scrum. Okay, that's what I was wondering. He's going to get scrum on the dive as well. So the penalty is even out. I, and I was wondering that, too, because the way he notioned, it seemed like he was getting both of them. Right. But Scrum is holding his shoulder, so I'm like, okay, maybe he blew the whistle early. I was like, hey, you're going because he's injured. Right. And he still might be injured, but from 
what the penalty uh, has been called by the referee. Maybe an embellishment or a dive, like you said. So and We see that in the NHL all the time. And sometimes uh, you, you kind of figure it's like, well, it's either one or the other. Right, and if right. it's an embellishment, it should only be the embellishment. But that's uh, usually kind of a bailout for the referees if they feel it goes both ways. So as the clock ticks down, there's five seconds left in this first period. McKendry trying to make one last push. A shot on. It goes wide of the cage. And we have a 2-1 game heading into the intermission. Maryville on top 2-1 to one after Quentin Stemfel's penalty shot goal to take the lead. And that is where we are right now here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. So don't go anywhere. Todd and our guy Will Starwalt will break things down in the first intermission. You've been watching Maryville Saints Hockey here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Welcome back, Flower. We're very excited to show you what we have here. The new access line, more powerful rebounds, lightweight construction, all designed in Canada, of course. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it. Today, tomorrow, and into the future. Hi, I'm Ethan Mahalachek, and I'm a game design major from St. Louis, Missouri. I decided on game design because it was something that knew that they were offering at Maryville. It was kind of an addition to the interactive design program, and when they offered it, I hopped right on board. I've always loved video games, and so um, I figured, why not try to make them? The professors have helped me build up to where I'm at at the moment in a variety of ways, but one of the most important and influential, I think, has been them pushing me to take projects that I've done and push them to their limits. Here at Maryville, it's it's required as a design student that you do at least one internship. I kind of went a little bit beyond that and have done three at this point, or I'm currently in my third. I'd say my favorite part about the program is that it's still kind of small at the moment, and so that allows for a really close connection with the professors and fellow students in the classroom and a lot of involved work in the classroom. So there's a lot of collaboration that goes on, a lot of, you know, helping each other. If you're interested in game design and even more so interested in Maryville, why not stop by, take a tour, and see what we're all about. start with a um, split squat and then followed by that will be a series of different kinds of jumps and movements that will try and get me get off the ground as quickly as possible. So before workouts I roll out for probably 10 minutes max. After I go through my rolling routine I'll generally go into a dynamic warm-up and then I'll head to the gym and start my workout. I pair hurdle hops after um, a different leg exercise, like a squat or a split squat. Um, so you get the strength part, and then after you do the strength part and you're, you're loaded with weight, you come over here and you're trying to be light on your feet and quick off the ground to, again, increase your explosiveness and speed on the ice. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. 
Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. This is a message for those who once tried to get a degree, but didn't, who face their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. Welcome back, Flower. We're very excited to show you what we have here. The new access line, more powerful rebounds, lightweight construction, all designed in Canada, of course. At Wassa Homes, we understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three-step building process, so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wassa Homes, we build your way, with a firm price and on time. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans. Welcome back to the Maryville Saints Intermission Report brought to you by Wausau Homes. After 20 minutes of play, the Maryville Saints lead the McKendree Bearcats by a score of 2-1. to one. And, Will, it's not necessarily the way that you draw it up when you start things, but ultimately if you're leading after the first period, Maryville's got to feel good about their overall effort. I mean, yeah, when you go into the period, uh, you always want to, you know, you always want to go into the period with the lead. And, I mean, wasn't the prettiest, like you said, but, I mean, we got to see a penalty shot. That was really exciting. A couple of us here in the booth, you know, haven't really seen. I haven't seen a college penalty shot yet, so that was a cool experience for me. And what a move that was, though, to get the goalie. You don't want to – I don't want to say put him on skates because they are on skates because that's the basketball term, but, I mean, he, he had him gone the complete other direction. Yeah, great patience there by Quentin Stemfold to fake out the goaltender, get him sliding the wrong way, draw it back, put it in and uh, giving his team the lead. And obviously special teams are still coming up to be a big thing in this series because we've already seen uh, four penalties handed out that led to power plays for each team. Again, they're even for both sides, so the referees are keeping it even with both sides, but I think both coaches are going to try their best to preach uh, staying out of the box. Whether the players can do that is the, the big question. And that's what we said in the pregame is the emotion like, like we said yesterday, you want to, you don't want to, how did we contradict ourselves? I think it was, you want to play with emotion, but not too much emotion. Right. You want to have that fire, but you got to be able to control that fire within you to be able to, you know, not draw the penalties and not do the, the stupid mistakes, like, you know, just pushing a little too much after the whistle. It's been interesting to see how much this game is mirrored yesterday, because as you mentioned in yesterday's pregame, uh, they kind of needed to weather the storm in the first period, get their legs under them. We saw a similar reaction from Maryville in this one, but they allowed that early goal, so they kind of had to play a little bit of catch-up. Yeah, they, had, they allowed that early goal, and that's one of those that they didn't expect to go in. Did his best to save it, couldn't quite get it, just rolled right in. But, I mean, they answered back. I mean, they have the lead now. They answered back, got the quick power play goal after the uh, bench minor there by McKendry and then the shootout not the, the shootout the penalty shot uh that was that was just an exciting that'll give you momentum going into that going into the second so we'll see whether they can carry that momentum through the second 20 minutes of play it's two to one Maryville after the first 20 minutes this has been the Wausau Holmes intermission report and this is the Maryville Saints hockey network don't go too far we'll have the puck drop on the second period coming up All the work, because the road to the next level never ends. All the work, all the sweat. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain. Block it out. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained, I'm dead. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained, I'm dead. I'm 
all the work because the road to the next level never ends. This is a message for those who once tried to get a degree but didn't, who face their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. There are very few companies that offer the opportunities that you'll find at Arco Construction. I guess some companies, their mentality is, it's this way, you know, or no other way. And Arco really is just like, hey, it's about having a, a great atmosphere, a fun environment, work hard, play hard. We truly do bleed Arco blue. Um, it is a family here. We are culture. You know, which sounds kind of weird, but at the end of the day, you know, everybody always asks me what is unique about Arco, and I just think that our culture is, is one that uh, can't be rivaled by any other company or any other opportunity. If somebody really wants to do something special with their, their lives and their career, uh, I think this is the best company to be able to do that. We're about serving others. We're, we're, we're about culture. We're about, we're about stretching you. We're about uh, stretching ourselves. We're about uh, you know, making a difference. I think I'd have to say we are tireless. We are experts in what we do. We are definitely not lazy. We are the game changer. Construction is moving more and more into the design build realm. Arco is the true design builder out there in a world of a lot of construction companies who like to throw the term around very loosely. We really are it. We win projects. We have fun. Uh, we create opportunities for individuals' financial success. So we like to win, and we're very successful. We're the best place you're ever going to work. Clear bar none. That's the way it is. You're gonna, you're gonna, we're going to set the standard. Arco is going to set a standard. And if you come to work here, then basically you're going to understand what the standard, what that bar is, and you're going to adjust everything else by this company. You're going to understand what the other companies are compared to this company. I've always wanted to go back to school, but getting a degree feels complicated now. I don't know if I can fit into my life like I did before. And I think about all the new jobs out there, and everything's moving so fast. I need a degree to help me further my career, but one that is worth my time and money. And I'm ready for the next step and to make sacrifices. But I want a university that believes in me the way that I do. Here at Maryville University, we stand for those who are brave. We've been bravely revolutionizing higher education for those striving to achieve for nearly 150 years. We're developing degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. Now, we're bringing this high quality education online so you can study anywhere at any time. The future belongs to the brave. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. At Wassa Homes, we understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three-step building process, so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wassa Homes, we build your way with a firm price and on time. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula as we get set for the second period 
The Saints lead 2-1 to one heading into the second frame. And goals by Trevor Henson and Quinton Stenfel. And then Amaregi got things going for the McKendry Bearcats early on in the first period. So Maryville able to respond, Todd, and that's a good sign. Yeah, if I'm the Maryville Saints, you got to feel good about being up by a goal, but also a little bit fortunate as well. If I'm Coach Hogan, what I want them to do is clean things up around both blue lines. Uh, the former color broadcaster for the St. Louis Blues, Kelly Chase, used to always say, you got about a three-foot window on either side of the blue line that you really need to take care of the puck. And we saw Maryville not doing that in that first period. They got away with it due to some good goaltending from Ed Coffey, but you're not going to be able to sustain that throughout the full 60 minutes. And if they clean that up, we saw them dominating a little bit in the offensive end later in that first period. So all they need to do is continue that, clean things up a little bit on their uh, blue line play, and then see where it takes them. So a couple negative things for the Saints. One, they start off on the penalty kill as the music still plays. 40 seconds left in the power play for McKendry. The music finally stops. And Nate Simpson, the defenseman for the Maryville Saints, is out the rest of the game. So five defense for the Saints the rest of the way. 40 minutes left here in this, what would you call it, a, an evening, an evening game or a, an afternoon game? I always figured anything in the 5 o'clock hour started the evening, so that's what I would go with. Okay. Because that always confuses me right. because it is <laughs> afternoon. Exactly, yeah. But anything afternoon is afternoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> Essentially uh, when the sun starts to go down. Right, yeah. So that'll do it for the McKendry power play as coming out of the box is Cole Mudra. Amaregi keeps the puck in. Comes behind the net. Hunter pins his man up against the boards. I believe that's Nordlander. And finally, the puck comes out of the zone. Karenji at the blue line on his forehand, cuts to the middle, looks up, waits. Will throw one. Look to catch Jack Harrison streaking towards the net. It was intercepted. Coffee plays it off the boards. Amaregi to Portel. Portel a shot. Goes off the stick behind the net. Coffey stands up, snags it out of midair. 18.30 left to go here in the second period. And Maryville once again a little bit fortunate. They got away with another turnover because if Richardson connects on that pass, it's basically a two-on-zero -oh for the Bearcats. Unfortunately for them, the puck just kind of slid underneath the, the stick of the attacker. Omaregi couldn't catch up either. So Maryville loses the draw. Lundquist behind the net. Henson. Fights off a check, throws it around the boards. A couple players battling for the puck. Karenji and Henson, or that was Tack, not able to come out with it. Lundquist behind the net. Comes up top to the blue line. Reader a shot on, that's blocked. Bexty gets his head up, makes the stretch pass to Karenji. A two-on-one for the Saints. Oh, the pass goes off the sliding stick. A great defensive play, and McKendry will set things up in their own zone. They flip it out of the zone, and that was Reeder throwing one down the ice. It's going to be an icing. Great defensive stick by McKendry. Yeah, Reeder was aptly named as he read that play perfectly. And I apologize for the pun, but I had to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So Jack Harrison battling on the faceoff with. Oh, a big hit by Jack Harrison. That gets the crowd going. Yeah, Harrison's been flying around physically. He's just avoided a couple big hits. McKendry's seen him coming a couple times and avoided it, but he's been going out there like a missile. So that was Rorig who was all bundled up with a shot on, there's a blocked shot by Wickham. Jack Harrison just bullying everyone on the ice with that speed, a flip pass. In is McKendry, a shot on, big save, Ed Coffey. Fantastic save there by Coffey as he read that play. He saw that uh, Proskurin was trying to go to the forehand and once you decide that that's gonna be the play for the attacker, then all you have to do is switch positions, get your pads, sealed down to the ice, which Coffey did, and he took away any kind of shooting lane. 
That was a fantastic pass. Proskurin could not finish it as Ed Coffey comes up large. Keeps it a 2-1 game as Maryville wins the draw. There's Josh Tack trying to move the puck. It's intercepted, comes behind the net, comes up top. Boudreaux's there using his body. Puck protection, loses the puck, but Tack is able to corral it. Another pass intercepted. McKendry enters into the zone. Coffey out of his cage. He'll leave it, a little miscommunication, a wraparound attempt. The net comes dislodged. So a little miscommunication between Ed Coffey and Josh Tack. A couple errant plays by Josh Tack on that last shift. And like you said, Maryville needs to clean up their defensive game as they've been a little, little nonchalant in their own zone. And they're lucky that Ed Coffey has come up large so far in this period. Yeah, I haven't heard a lot of chatter, so I almost wonder if there wasn't anything said there and both players just assumed the other was going to go the opposite direction. So it's kept in by McKendry. Bexty, oh, a weird play. That was really risky as another whistle has been blown. And let's see what they, we got here. I think the net came off again, but it looked like the referee was signaling that uh, McKendry might have knocked it off, so maybe the faceoff's coming out because he was pointing out of the zone. But yeah. They're, they're setting up for a faceoff in the zone, so. Well, either way, Jaden Bexty looked like he was going behind the net to just wheel around and try and break things out for the Saints, but he ended up in a hand pass in their own zone, so. And that's going to be a penalty, I think. That is because it's right off the faceoff. Right, yeah. We actually saw, if you are in St. Louis and a St. Louis Blues fan, we saw Ryan O'Reilly do something similar not too long ago, and he got called for a penalty. And I think that's going to be one of those calls. We, we obviously haven't seen it as much in the collegiate ranks because the face-offs tend to be a little bit cleaner. But uh, just in general, I think it's going to take players a little bit to get used to because they're, they're just kind of in the habit of, like, you go down to your knees, sometimes the puck's right there second nature to just kind of sweep it over. So a block shot right off the face off. McKendry on the power play, looking to knot things up. Sokoff at the top of the blue line, feeds it down. Proskurin unable to corral the puck and it's sent back down deep. 16-10 left to go here in the second period. McKendry looking for the equalizer. They break things out. Skating with it now, with speed, Jesper Lundqvist feeds it across, comes up to the half wall. Sokoff slows things down, drops it off for Reeder. Reeder, a wrist shot, saved by Coffey. Sokoff trying to throw one on net, but Maryville able to get body and get that position, and I mean, he had an empty net right there to throw it in. Nordlander around his own net, hits the blue line into the neutral zone. He'll go into the zone. His pass is intercepted, and Jack Harrison with speed going to the net as Jens Juliuson on the PK, a shot on. Oh, a big save by Warner. Juliuson throws it on net again. The whistle has been blown as, well, you guessed it, the net comes dislodged. But you love the attack from Maryville right there. Sometimes you'll see teams just kind of bail out. They head off to the bench, cycle the puck around the boards, take a little breather. Maryville was going for glory right there. And Jens Juliusen came up with the puck inside the Maryville blue line. And if he looks up, that's a clean two-on-one. He decided to just throw it. There's a shot right off the faceoff by Cole Mudra into the chest of... Wesley Werner, so we'll try it again. But if he looks up and sees Jack Harrison, they have a two-on-one just clean going down the ice, but he threw it off the boards. And, of course, Jack Harrison, with the speed and determination, created something out of nothing. And a great save by Werner. He keeps it a one-goal game. So McKendry looking to tack on the second goal of the game. Amaregi got things going on the power play for them in the first period. They're looking for another one. He has the puck right now, leaves it. It's behind the net. With it now, switching spots. 
That was Brown. That slap pass is just wide from Nordlander. It's behind the net. Battling forward is Mudra on his backhand. He'll clear it. Jen Juliuson racing after it again. Warner comes out of his cage and he'll fake the pass. Goes the other way, delayed off sides. McKendry will just flip it into the neutral zone. Amaregi leaves it to three on one for McKendry. Richardson to his backhand. Whoa, what a save by Ed Coffey. A little scrum ensues around the net. You have to expect that with guys crashing the net, but a big save, Ed Coffey coming up big once again. Yeah, Coffey's been huge in this game. 14 saves right now. We'll see if they update it with 15 saves, but he's bailed his team out quite a bit because as well as Maryville's played, it seems like their turnovers just end up with odd man rushes the other way. Uh, McKendry probably going to feel a little bit hard done that they haven't tied this game up. And that's, that's one thing. You can have all the offensive zone pressure and and get lots of shots on net as it's 17 to 15 in shots right now. And, you know, Maryville has done a great job at creating offense. But like you said, and we've touched on, it's just one play in the neutral zone right inside the blue line of McKendry or right inside the blue line of their own zone where they're not connecting with those passes. They're getting intercepted and they're going the opposite direction. So McKendry setting things up. Cross. The crease, Maryville going the other way again. Stavro hits the blue line, cuts to the middle on his backhand, throws one to the front of the net. It's sticked wide, and there's Jack Harrison pounding the puck. Going down, I believe was Reeder. He's slow to get up, doesn't grab his stick. It's a three on two with Jack Harrison coming back. Sokoff waits, his pass intercepted, Stavro. Tries to hit Henson as the defenseman goes in. In on the four check. Got to watch out there. Whistle blown. Are they going to call too many men? That's a dagger if they're calling that because McKendry's already on the power play. Too many men. They're calling it. That's a tough one, especially while they're changing. And it's not like... It's not like Maryville played the puck. It hit off of a skate. And that's tough. So now Coach Hogan figuring out who is going to serve that penalty and who he's going to put out on the penalty kill, the five on three. But this is where Maryville's really got to start cleaning it up, and I know that we've repeated that phrase a couple different times, but they've just kind of allowed McKendry to kind of bait them into a few of these things, and they're getting involved in a little bit of too much physicality. You love the body checking, but you go in for the hit, you separate yourself, you get on with things, and Maryville's right now going for that second and third play after that. Referees are watching for it, and right now they've lost a, a couple good players. Uh, Karinji's in the box as well. Not sure what happened there, but that was on that initial call. And just like that, Maryville gives up the game-tying goal. McKendry capitalizes on the five-on-three. Right away, Ed Coffey made a, an unbelievable stick save as it went to his blocker side, and he opened up his stick and shoveled it back towards the slot. And then, once again, that goal going five hole, the second one on Ed Coffey today. I'm sure he wants that one back as well. So we have a tie game, and that plays into exactly what you were saying. You know, you're taking too many penalties, not staying disciplined, and just kind of having a brain fart here and there, and now it's a tie game. And that's the second time, as you mentioned, that Coffey's – he made a good save. You – you don't even necessarily know if uh, wanting it back is the right phrase, but he makes a good save. The rebound, unfortunately, goes right to Almaregi, and he just kind of tucks it in. So McKendry capitalizes on, capitalizes on both of their power play attempts as they go off sides. 13 minutes on the dot left here in the second period. Pretty even game so far. Maryville's really got to nail it down here, though, because uh, 
We saw the Saints score on the five on three, fail to score on the ensuing power play. Similar situation reversed here with uh, McKendry still up by a man. So Maryville's got to clamp down, kill off the remaining minute 24. So just like that, from the scoreboard, McKendry apparently got two goals in that last power play. Two point play. The two goal, <laughs> yeah, two point goal, I guess, if you want to call it that. Racing for it, Jake Charche. He's taken down, it's still loose. Oh, what a save by Warner on Joey Gagan. Great hustle by Jake Charche. And now McKendry will head to the box. That is pure hustle that led to that penalty. An unbelievable play by Jake Charche as Kirill Proskurin will head to the sin bin. I mean, there's nothing much you can do if you're McKendry. You have to take that penalty. I mean, he, he's in on a, on a breakaway. And we know what happened last time Maryville went in on a breakaway. They ended up drawing a penalty shot, and Quentin Stemple buried on his attempt. So I think it was a good, good opportunity for Maryville. And Joey Gagan also had a chance to put it in the back of the net, and Wesley Warner got his blocker on it. Yeah, I thought for sure that Gagan was going to score on that. But a solid play overall that evens things up. So we're back to four on four. We've seen this once before. Josh Tackett goes off of his skate. Shot goes just wide. Henson battling for it. Scrum throws it on net. It's into the glove of Coffee. He plays it. Tack throws it around. And Damien Karenji turns it over. Ivasenko a shot on. It's blocked. Karenji with Stavro and Tack. Tack jumps up into the play. Stavro can't connect with it. Henson steps in, keeps the puck inside the zone, using his body. Goes around the cage, stops, feeds it for Stavro. They set up a triangle. Here's Tack, top of the blue line, a shot, a block shot by Ivasenko. Tack goes back for it. He'll throw it over to Stavro, can't connect. Karenji leaves it for Stavro, back to Karenji. And shot on as he tried to wrap that around. He's opened up. Wesley Warner able to deny it. Less than a minute left here now as Maryville will head to the power play. So the four on four becomes a Maryville power play. Mudra loses his handle of the puck. McKendry will send it back down. It's picked off by Henson. Henson with his big body enters into the zone. Henson to his backhand. Over to Boudreaux. Boudreaux can't throw one on net. They set things up with 20 seconds left here. Back door. Prexler can't get his handle on it. It's loose and able to grab it and smother it is Werner. So 15 seconds left here in the Proskurin penalty. 11.02 left to go in the second period. We're all knotted up at twos. Lots of twos going on. And you'd love to see, speaking of twos, 22, Trevor Henson cutting through the defense like a hot knife through butter. You'd love to see him take that shot, though, because he, he tried to set it up on the, the doorstep on the far side, but I think he had a better shooting lane had he had taken it himself than trying to thread the needle and hit the pass. So Cole Mudra and the Maryville Saints win the draw. Comes up top. Stavro as clock ticks down on the power play. Prexler on the half wall, tries to throw one out front. A shot on, it goes off a stick and into the netting. So there's one second technically on the scoreboard. And Proskurin, who came out of the penalty box, he's going to jump back into the box. This actually, for McKendry, could benefit them, especially if they win the faceoff. They could do a stretch pass play. They're just going to leave the, the door open. I'm, they should shut the door and then have to open the door. So Wickham throws it around. Hunter, he's there in his own blue line. Little sauce pass over to Phil Kemmer. Kemmer goes off the stick of Boudreaux inside the zone. Wickham, he's knocked off the puck by Bexy, who lays a big hit. Boudreaux racing after it. Flipped up off the glass, Amaregi to Richardson. Richardson tries to gather and shoot one on. He can't. Amaregi, pass out front, redirected. They score! Brad Richardson 
Gets his fifth of the year, his 13th point of the season, which leads McKendry. And just like that, McKendry back on top, 3-2, midway through the second. And again, it's just not been the night for Ed Coffey, and no fault of his own again. But he's scrambling out in front. Nobody was able to clear that puck away. He makes the left pad save, but as he's going down on his belly, Richardson was able to collect it and just slot it in. Richardson, no, no one was there back door either as the puck was redirected off a stick, stayed on the ice, and Coffey made that initial save just like the other ones, and he made that sprawling attempt. That would have been a, a nifty save if he could have got a pad on it, but like you said, unable to get the stop, and that's where we sit right now, 3-2 McKendry. They have two unanswered goals here in the second frame. They try and whisk one towards the front of the net. Henson, man, does he just glide out there. Charche over to Henson inside the zone. Puck bouncing around off some sticks. McKendry will flip it out of the zone into the neutral zone. It takes a Maryville hop, and that was a, that was a bounce that a, only a punter could love. That was a great bounce. Right, yeah, settling right in along the goal line. So Coffey smothers it but plays it. Pass coming out of the zone. Too far for TJ Prexler. It's Proskurin. We'll try and make a pass. It goes off the stick of Maryville, so no icing. Henson battling for it. Comes out front. Ivasenko was looking for the shot. A two-on-one for the Saints. Alvagran in. Shot off the stick once again. A terrific play by McKendry as that's Ryan Radke getting a stick in the lane. Proskurin to the middle. Soak off, can't connect. Goes back the other way. Radke will spin, throw it up. And there's Cole Mudra putting a body on Proskurin. Henson makes the pass, goes off the stick of Christian Alvagran. And on that two on one, Alvagran, it did not seem like he was passing the puck at all. No, he, he had eyes on the goal. And <laughs> He didn't care if that defensive stick was in the way or not. He was going to try to put it in. Karenji over to Stenfel, goes off his skate behind the net. Stenfel looked like he wanted to throw a, a reverse check. Jack Harrison battling for the puck. Coming out with it is Stenfel. And that was Scrum who was able to get his body in front of Stenfel. It's kept in, though. Karenji tries to throw him back to Kemmer. Squeaks out of the zone, and Mudra is back with it. Mudra makes a pass over to Jack Harrison. He can't get a stick on it. And with 7.49, we have an icing call. It's going back the other way, a defensive zone faceoff for the Saints. And it's a fine line, but when you have the lead, you don't mind that drop pass towards the defender. But with Alvagren on the stick, you'd like to see him just carry that in, take a shot on goal. With those two quick goals, there was kind of a, a buzz in inside the arena, and it seems like that buzz is kind of gone now. We'll see if Maryville can jumpstart the crowd of all the people that are here as Karenji tries to make the pass. Goes out front and just wide of the cage. Harrison and Cole Mudra battling for it. That pass goes off a stick, perhaps off the skate, but Warner's there to smother it. 7.28 left to go here. And those are the minor bounces that can alter a game. We've seen it go against Ed Coffey to where those bounces just aren't really favoring him, and they've ended up in the back of the net. Werner very fortunate there that he was in a good position to make that save and managed to close the five hole as that puck really came off with some force off the defender. And that is the definition of just get pucks to the net. You have no idea what could happen, who it could hit off of, or any of that. So... Oh, Jim Hunter, a huge hit, and Jim Hunter is heading to the box. Saw that coming. We'll have to see who he took out. It looked like that was Adam Dembski. Jim Hunter laid a big hit as McKendry threw the puck off the glass. It hit off the, st the stick of Josh Tack. It was going to be a high stick, 
So either way, it was going to be a defensive zone faceoff in Maryville's zone, unless McKendry touched it. And Jim Hunter pretty much lined Dembski up and hit him right in the boards. Now, the puck was near Dembski, but it seemed like Jim Hunter skated a decent amount to hit him. Yeah, I think that you could go with charging, boarding, take your pick. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a hard hit. It's a hard playing game that Maryville likes to play, especially when they play uh, their rivals like McKendry is. But Maryville's already shorthanded in terms of Simpson being gone. Hunter, it's his first game back. I understand the juices are flowing. It's just got to be a little bit smarter on that play. So Maryville wins the draw. They exit out of the zone. And with speed, Anthony Stavro in on a breakaway. Stavro to the backhand. Oh, what a big save by Wesley Werner. Stavro in on the breakaway to his backhand, and Werner gets a glove on it. Would have been an excellent play by the Maryville penalty kill unit as Stavro was humming through the neutral zone looking to tie this game up. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not a little bit of metal, melted ice at center ice with the afterburners that he turned on. But tried to go to the backhand, just couldn't quite get it lifted up enough. So that penalty on Jim Hunter was a five-minute penalty. So this is going to be a long kill for the Saints and an excellent opportunity for McKendry to make it a two-goal game. The Bearcats work the puck around in the offensive zone. Nordlander up top at the blue line. Richardson winds up, fakes it into the skate of Nordlander, back to Richardson, down low. McKendry, that's Brown. He's worked off the puck by Mudra. Comes down low for Amaregi. Now Brown with it, up top to the blue line. Richardson, a shot on, a nice save by Coffey. It went off the stick, and with it, is Maryville. Stavro collects it inside the blue line. The pass to Joey Gagan is of no avail. A bad change by Maryville. Three on one. Racing in is Jack Harrison back in position. A shot on and another huge block by the captain, Jack Harrison. Leading by example, diving in front of that shot. Puck behind the net. The net comes dislodged. And we have a whistle. 332 left here. In the second period, a 3-2 game. McKendry leads two unanswered goals, looking to tack on another. And Maryville had a golden opportunity to make this game a 3-3 one with Anthony Stavro racing through the neutral zone on the kill. Could not get the backhand to go as Wesley Werner made the stop. So McKendry kicks the puck back up to the blue line. They try and settle things down. At the blue line, that's Scrum. He's at the top of the umbrella. It comes down low. Henson battling for it, but McKendry comes out with it. Rorig feeds it back to the half wall. Sokoff with it now is Lundquist behind the net. Proskurin comes up with it, up to Scrum. Scrum back to Proskurin at the top of the circle. A shot, that one's blocked by, who would have guessed it, Jack Harrison. McKendry working things, goes across the ice, off the stick of Rorig. Back down low for Lundquist. Henson battling for the puck. Harrison coming in. Proskurin fell down but gets back up and sends it back up top to the blue line. He gets it back. Proskurin feeds it. And now it's going the other way. And he sends it down as that was Joey Gagan. We'd like to see him try and make a... A pass as that goes off the skate of Trevor Henson. It seems like Maryville had numbers going the other way. I understand the dump in, though. Just got to get some fresh guys on the ice. Yeah, I think they were a little bit worried that they were going to get caught on another turnover like they had done uh, on the previous wow. offensive zone play. Wow. Tripping call coming against Jens Juliuson. Jens Juliuson lifts the stick. Player goes down on his own on his own terms, and that is a tough call. I never want to be a homer, but that is a tough call for Maryville as Jens Juliusen will serve too. So just like that, things could turn 
ugly here soon for Maryville if they cannot stop McKendry, on, which will now be a five on three. So Maryville's going to take a timeout. I totally agree. I'm sure Coach Hogan wants an explanation of what happened. And now the refs are talking with one another. And I'm sure one of them is telling the other, hey, that was not a penalty. Right. And those are the kind of discussions that officials have to have. And you're not going to go over and say, hey, you need to not put him in the box because they've already called the penalty. But just for future reference, it's like, hey, this is what I saw, that kind of thing. Uh, from a Maryville perspective, they just got to buckle down. And, I mean, that's easy for us to say we're not out on the ice <laughs> uh, spilling blood and guts out there. But you got a full two minutes left on the five-on-three so even if Maryville manages to kill that off, that's two minutes spent defensively in your zone, potentially trying to kill this off. And that's a lot of energy spent. And you're, you're the counterpoint to Maryville being so deep is the fact that they're using offensive players now to kill off penalties. And that takes a, uh, the opportunity to try to tie things up later away from them because they're using up uh, valuable energy like you said three forwards out on the ice right now on this five on three jack harrison cole mudra and joey gaggett as mckendry just works the puck around a shot on that one's blocked and you got three guys out there that love blocking shots as that shot from the point goes off ed coffee into the corner mckendry back up top nordlander nordlander feeds it back that's Brown on the half wall. Richardson a shot and Jack Harrison blocks it. Into the corner, Jack Harrison ties his man up on the boards. It comes behind the net for Amaregi. Amaregi loses the puck from Mudra as he got a little too comfortable down low. Jack Harrison comes in, throws it around the boards. It's kept in though by Richardson. Richardson walks in, feeds it to Nordlander. Lots of pressure, Cole Mudro gets a stick on it, but it stays in the zone. Comes in the slot, shot on, big save, Ed Coffey. Mudro with it, backhands it off the skate. It's kept in the zone. Across the ice, Richardson, a shot, it's waffle boarded into the corner. McKendry still five on three, 40 seconds left to go in the five on three. Back door, they shoot, they score, no they don't. They wave it off. It looked like Ed Coffey got a piece of it, and it might be in his pads. Oh my goodness, Todd, what a save. Wow. <laughs> he took his blocker off, but I think that's where the puck went. McKendry was celebrating, but I think they just assumed that it had to have gone in because they didn't know where else it could have gone. But Ed Coffey doing the splits, sticking out that right arm, doing anything he can to keep that puck out and keep his team alive. What a save by Ed Coffey as Maryville still remains on the five on three. That is a save that if this game goes Maryville's way, that is definitely the play of the game, the save of the game for sure. 20 seconds left to go in the five on three. McKendry moving the puck around. Lundquist unable to corral it. It comes behind the net. Henson all over that puck in the corner trying to eat some clock. McKendry comes up with it. Roaring, shot from the point. Off the pad of Ed Coffey. Proskurin back down low to Nikita Sokoff. Back to Proskurin. Over to Scrum. Scrum a shot. Saved by Coffey. Backstee flips it out of the zone. Stavro, oh, he can't connect with it. Would have been a two on one. Proskurin enters into the zone and it goes offside. 2.05 left to go here in the second period. That save by Coffey reminds me of D2 Mighty Ducks when Julie the Cat Gaffney comes up with the save on Gunnar Stahl in the shootout and no one knows where the puck is. And then, boom, she has it right in her glove. Exactly. And what a huge kill, though, for the Maryville Saints. They not only kill off the five on four, but a five on three for a full two minutes. And now we'll see how much energy they have in the tank. Two minutes left to go here in the second period. Bexty tries to kick at it, able to come up with it. Bexty still with it, a shot goes off a stick. 
and into the netting. 147 left here in the second period. This game has been all but even in terms of shots and goals. McKendry has the one point advantage on both of those statistics. They lead 3-2, and they have 24 shots to Maryville's 23. The game keeps swinging back and forth, and Maryville's got to hope that it swings back in their fortune before the end. Dembski with it inside the blue line. His pass is intercepted. Bonnet steps up, throws it over to Stavro. Stavro, he'll throw one on, and it's into the glove of Werner. 134 left here in the second. Yeah, big time goal here late in the second period. Would be huge for Maryville heading into the second intermission, especially when you know those late period goals are not always daggers, but definitely not one that you want to give up heading into an intermission. But that would be a gigantic momentum swing if they could pilfer a goal away from McKendry that you kill off that five on three power play and then manage to get a goal as well. That would really put momentum in their favor. So Maryville looking to capitalize on that offensive zone draw. They can as the puck squirts out of the zone. Tack goes back, tries to make a stretch pass. No icing called as Karinji's in on the forecheck. Radke back with it for McKendry. He flips it off the boards, and the Bearcats go the other way. Up to Portel, driving the net, a shot on. It's loose. That was Ed Coffey making a blocker save. And now Bonnet makes the pass up to Karenji. Karenji leaves it for Bonnet. Bonnet will throw it in. It's coming back out. And now pinballs back into the zone. Portel pass up off of Richardson. Tack steps up. Karenji's there. Stop and start by Prosker and a shot just wide. Harrison tries to make a move. It's kept in. Less than a minute to go here in the second. Shot from a weird angle, saved by Coffey. That pass is an errant one from Anthony Stavro to Christian Alvagran. And Stavro just didn't have his head up in time as he kind of whipped around and made that pass, and it just wasn't anywhere near the speedy Christian Alvagran. Yeah, I think he must have saw a white jersey out of the corner of his eye, just kind of flung it up there, but there was so much pace on that pass. And that was going to be difficult for Alvagran to catch. Well, we know Alvagran can wheel around this ice. Him and Stavro are probably some of the fastest players that I've seen in quite some time. Breakout pass just a little too far in front. There's Alvagran with that speed trying to wrestle the puck off of Ryan Radke, or that's Reeder, actually. 17.7 seconds left here in the second period. McKendry has a one goal lead. As Todd mentioned earlier, a huge five on three kill for the Saints. Bunch of block shots and you know, you have to give credit to those three forwards that were out there for the majority of it. And they, they showed a lot of patience, but they were definitely very aggressive when they needed to be. Maryville wins the draw, comes up to the point to Henson. Henson will float one on. It's loose in front. Dembski can't corral it for McKendry. Kemmer sends it back in. Five seconds left to go. Alvagran unable to get it behind the net, and the buzzer will sound. That'll do it for the second period. So, McKendry tacks on two goals and will head into the intermission, leading three to two. A power play goal and a deflection that Ed Coffey just couldn't get the pad on. He's had a terrific game so far, just a, a few unlucky goals. Yeah, a couple bad bounces, that maybe one that he might like to have back on that first one, but Ed Coffey's really kept the Saints in this game as well. He made that fantastic save on the penalty kill. As you mentioned, the forward's doing a fantastic job as well on that penalty kill. And they, I don't know whether it's Coach Hogan saying something in the locker room or just a, a general feeling between the players. You got to manage to generate some momentum off of that, though, because that could be a huge swing in this game. Well, both teams will head to the intermission. They'll head to the locker rooms, and we will be back soon with Todd and Will giving their recap on this second period. We'll see if Maryville can take 
that momentum from the penalty kill and translate it into something in the third period. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. It's a 3-2 game heading into the second intermission. You're watching Maryville Saints Hockey here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Visit us at ExploreStLouis.com for your chance to win a weekend of non-stop fun. Look, sport might not be the answer right now, but it teaches us this, that impossible challenges must be faced and overcome. And the reward is joy. And it will always be that way. And now that sport is back, don't waste these chances. Play with more heart, even more fire, and hope that does not end. Seek out what scares you and let your body do what it loves. Nobody knows what the future holds. Nobody knows what will come our way. So honor every breath and respect every chance. Opportunities will come, and we must be ready. By now, you guys probably know there's a lot to see and do in St. Louis. But when it comes to the art scene, there's more here than meets the eye. From Laumeier Sculpture Park and the City Garden to the stunning Cathedral Basilica, one of the largest mosaic collections in the entire world. So if art is your thing, St. Louis is on display all year long. Ooh, now that's an exhibit. St. Lou is always exploring. A lot of the times, uh, students that are thinking about entering our program, they have a lot of questions. They've done their research. Uh, a lot of the questions that the students have are based upon outcomes. Where am I going to be four years from now if I decide to be in the Rawling Sport Business Management Program? Here, I'll show you. Here's where our alumni work now. We have students working in the athletic department at universities. We have students working for sports teams. We have students working for sports agencies, whether it be an abstract marketing, a Learfield Sports, an IMG. Uh, those are a lot of the organizations that are hiring our students. And we do have a lot of our alumni who do work for sports teams, uh, be, whether it be uh, the Houston Rockets, um, the Kansas City Royals, the St. Louis Cardinals, St. Louis Blues. Uh, many of our students have worked for those agencies and continue to work for those types of organizations now. Power aid. Man, if I had had this kind of power back in my day. My crossover would have been something else. I'd have broke everybody's ankles. The rare peanut vendor. My crossover would have been so crazy if you recorded it, watched it two weeks later, broke ankles. Man, that is some kind of power. Careful now. At Wassa Homes, we understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three-step building process, so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wassa Homes, we build your way with a firm price and on time. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans.
Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. It's 3-2 to two McKendry after two periods of play as things kind of swung in the Bearcats' favor during that middle frame. And, Will, uh, it was an interesting period. Obviously, McKendry will feel good about themselves because they grabbed the lead. But it was an odd period for Maryville because you got that huge save from Ed Coffey there on the five-on-three. But he also had a couple that not necessarily that he'd like to have back, but just he's going to feel hard done by because he's played so well and then the bounces aren't going his way just on a couple shots. Yeah, I was actually looking at uh, all the players coming off the ice, just seeing how they were hanging their, hanging their heads, things like that, That because that's a big tell going into the third. And he was, all the players were kind of looking over at him, and he was sitting over there, skates over to the bench, slams his stick off the board, and you could tell he was frustrated. But, I mean, those goals aren't 100% on him. It's just wrong place, wrong time when the puck's in the middle like that. Right, and he's made some good saves on there. They just haven't been able to clear off the rebounds and so it's kind of one of those games as a goaltender you don't know how to feel because he's kind of helping his team to stay in this one it could easily be four or five to two really but then you get those couple to get past you and anytime that happens as a goalie you're going to feel like you you missed an opportunity I guess yeah I I understand that like like I said I've played I've played goalie as a soccer goalie like it's not the same thing but there's sometimes where it's like you know you want to have one back, and then there's some that there's just not a whole lot you can do. Right. And that frustrates you, but I think he'll be, once he kind of talks to his team a little bit, and he'll understand because he's seen a lot of chances on going the other way that maybe that's what's frustrating him is he's seeing the other goalie make saves on the breakaways that they're getting, and it's just, if I could just be a little bit better. But I think he's played a great game so far. They just need to execute their chances in the offensive zone, and then this game is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it's a game of bounces, and as you mentioned, Wesley Werner's made some good saves. He's had a couple good breaks, though, as well, because there was one that easily could have gone in off a defender's skate. He managed to close the five hole. Uh, from a physical standpoint, Maryville's got to kind of clean things up. The power plays have started to really swing in McKendry's di direction. Yeah, and it's just some of those, you know, there's finishing the check, and then there's just going too hard for the checks. I said it yesterday. Coach said that sometimes his players see a little red, and they try and finish those checks just a little too hard, as we saw when there was the five-minute penalty and things like that. But I think as long as they just ease up on a little bit, just, you know, play a little smarter, and I think they can come out with a win on this one. Yeah, and we've seen that at all levels of hockey to where sometimes you get teams that are just more interested going directly for the hit as opposed to playing the body to come away with the puck. We'll see if Maryville can clean that up in the third period. But there is still 20 minutes to try to swing this one back the other direction from the Maryville perspective. We'll see what the Saints have in store for us as we've got the puck drop coming up in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. We thank you for watching the intermission report brought to you by Wausau Homes. This is the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. All the work, because the road to the next level never ends. All the work, all the sweat. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain. Block it out. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained, I'm dead. All the work, all the sweat, all the pain, I'm trained, I'm dead. I'm black. All the work, because the road to the next level never ends. This is a message for those who once tried to get a degree, but didn't, who face their future and their fears. Here at Maryville University, we've been recognizing brave students like you for nearly 150 years. It's for you that we're developing our degree programs in partnership with the businesses that will employ the leaders of tomorrow. And now we're bringing it online because it's hard to get a degree. But if you're brave, you can do anything. Let's be brave together. Learn more now at maryville.edu slash online. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. There are very few companies that offer the opportunities that you'll find at Arco Construction. 
I guess some companies, their mentality is it's this way, you know, or no other way. And our code really is just like, hey, it's about having a, a great atmosphere, a fun environment, work hard, play hard. We truly do bleed Arco Blue. Um, it is a family here. We are culture, you know, which sounds kind of weird, but at the end of the day, you know, everybody always asks me what is unique about Arco, and I just think that our culture is, is one that uh, can't be rivaled by any other company or any other opportunity. If somebody really wants to do something special with their, their lives and their career, um, I think this is the best company to be able to do that. We're about serving others. We're, we're, we're about culture. We're about, we're about stretching you. We're about uh, stretching ourselves. We're about, uh, you know, making a difference. I think I'd have to say we are tireless. We are experts in what we do. We are definitely not lazy. We are the game changer. Construction is moving more and more into the design build realm. Arco is the true design builder out there in a world of a lot of construction companies who like to throw the term around very loosely. We really are it. We win projects. We have fun. Uh, we create opportunities for individuals' financial success. So we like to win, and we're very successful. We're the best place you're ever going to work. Clear bar none. That's the way it is. You're gonna, you're gonna, we're going to set the standard. Arco is going to set a standard. And if you come to work here, then basically you're going to understand what the standard, what that bar is, and you're going to adjust everything else by this company. You're going to understand what the other companies are compared to this company. College hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus. Determination. Strategy. And poise. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart, skill, and passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. Hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. We're here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula as we... Have started the third period. Maryville down by one. In the slot, a shot. Oh, no, what a save by Warner as Cole Mudra was crashing the net. Got a stick on it. Warner able to keep it a one-goal game. So just like that, Maryville already getting some offensive zones opportunities as Christian Albergram with speed, a shot on. Rebound. Harrison unable to get the rebound. Cole Mudra, big hit. He goes down. Mudra a little bit fortunate there because he had eyes on that hit, not the puck at all. The referee could have easily called a penalty there. And he, and that was, that was Rorig who he bumped bodies with. And Rorig didn't even touch the puck as Henson enters into the zone. Rorig somewhat skated right past the, the puck. And Mudra, like you said, he, he did not even have eyes for the puck. He was, he was trying to lay out Rorig. And for the most part, he did. Right. And I think the only reason that they did get away with it is the puck was right there. Nobody managed to touch it, but it was in the vicinity. And it seemed like he didn't even hit him as much as it looked like they just ran into each right, other. Right, yeah. So Kemmer has it, feeds it for Charche. He hits the red line. Weaving in between guys. Stemful in the slot. 
Prexler is shot. Oh, he can't get enough on it. And Werner's there to make the stop. I think Prexler just tried to be cheeky there and just floated over his glove instead of just throwing one into the back of the net. And oh, a fight has ensued. Stenfel goes down as his cage came off and they are wrestling behind the net. That is Stenfel and Jacob Wicken. As they are battling, here we go, folks. The referees are letting them tussle. They finally grab them. Stenfel and Wickham got tangled up behind the net, and it looked like Stenfel's his, his bubble essentially came undone, and he was sort of given a face wash. Yeah, and that's going to get under the skin of any player, as we saw right there with Quentin Stemple. But, uh, and I'm not even going to sit up here and say you got to be smarter about that because when a player gets under your skin like that, things are going to happen. The blood's going to boil. Uh, but this just shows you how deep-seated this rivalry has become between these two teams in a short amount of time because we saw a fight between these two teams yesterday. Players ejected. Seeing that again tonight. And the benches are going to be a little bit lighter now. I know from one perspective, one could say, you know, maybe not the best idea because you are already short. But the way this team plays, that is something that this team really likes to do. Is it, they, they love to throw the body around and just play physical. And that's as physical as you can get starting a fight. And it looks like the Maryville team on the bench, those guys were up on their feet and they got excited. So like you see in the NHL or in any pro hockey, that is, you know, when two guys go and they fight, it gets the benches, you know, gets the guys going. So we'll see if maybe that can spark some energy for this team. Now you won't have Quentin Stenfel the rest of the way, but you could get some energy on that bench now. And I think that's gotta be the focus for Coach Hogan and his troops. So it He's not going to be happy with that extracurricular activity uh, because he, as much as he loves the fact that his team is willing to go out there, throw the body, he doesn't like the fact that they're bulls with a, a cape being waved in front of them <laughs> at times. But sometimes that can give you an energy, a positive jolt, as we've seen. Uh, you, you brought up St. Louis Blues one time. That was kind of a controversial play with uh, Jordan Bennington when he was going against the Sharks and had been pulled. Uh, there were fans on both sides that thought, oh, well, that's a great play, trying to take a jab at some players on the way out. Other players or other play, other fans didn't like it. So we'll kind of see if that can be a similar instance here with, with Stemple's play, uh, whereas that's, a coach is never going to like a player getting kicked out, but if the team can take something positive out of it, then you go from there. So we'll see if Maryville can get that energy going as they trail by one. Shot on, and Werner's there to make the save. After all that, there was actually a penalty yeah. handed out to McKendry, so another power play opportunity for Maryville and see if they can get one with the man advantage again. That's Amaregi who's serving the penalty as the puck squirts loose, poked away by Anthony Stavro, so it stays in the zone. Alvagram battling for it, helping him out. Two other Maryville Saints, Jaden Bexty trying to get in there. He does, grabs the puck, feeds it up top to Stavro. Stavro over to Boudreaux. This is that unit that worked the puck around so well last time. Shot on, that's blocked into the corner. Bexty puts on the brake, sends it back down low. Over to Boudreaux. Boudreaux is shot, and that one's blocked. Comes out of the zone, and that was Ivasenko laying the body. Out on the line, a shot on off a stick and into the netting. 17-23 left to go here in the third period. Maryville now leading in shots, 29-25 with just over a minute left to go in the power play. It's been a completely different performance from Warner here this evening compared to what he had last night. He allowed four quick goals, got the yank, but he composed himself, came back for McKendry, and he's been a solid reason why they're ahead here tonight. So Maryville wins the draw, comes up to Karenji, over to Henson. Henson a shot, it's into the body, and that one is sent down. 55 seconds left to go on the power play for the Saints. 
looking for the equalizer. Karenji leaves it for, boot, or for Cole Mudra. His pass to Prexler goes off his stick, goes behind the net and sent out once again. So sort of like that first power play where they had some opportunities, got set up, and then they just can't really enter into the zone with any, any luck. As they're all bundled up inside the neutral zone, throwing it in is Mudra. In on the four check, Jack Harrison. Coming around the boards once again. Henson able to keep it in. Henson over to Mudra, into the slot. And it is intercepted and sent back down. So that'll pretty much do it for the power play for Maryville. Mudra feeds it over to Cole Bonnet. Bonnet will flip it in. Harrison in on the four check. He'll try and whack at it. It's coming back around for Lundquist. Goes off his stick or off his skate and a shot on by Mudra. And there's Warner. though it's just can they get things going in the offensive zone and can they capitalize on their opportunities Warner has had a heck of a game so far Ivasenko back inside the blue line feeds it for scrum goes off of a skate back into the zone scrum feeds it on over to Ivasenko he loses it and now Damian Karenji has it leaves it for tack tack Skates up the ice, hits the red line. It goes off of Amaregi. And now Scrum has it inside the McKendry zone. Scrum will flip it down. Not sure about that play as he was well inside of his own blue line. Maybe got too much of too much on it. I, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, I don't know if he wanted to go up higher with it. It, it was likely to end up in a faceoff either way. You go any higher, you're going to hit the rafters here in this building, but. Yeah, he put enough on it that that was never going to not be icing. So Bexy taking the face off for the Saints. He wins it up to Henson. Henson has a goal tonight. Damian Karenji now. Shot on, and Werner's there to smother it. 13.48 left to go. Still plenty of time, and I think that what we just saw there from Maryville is what they got to do for the rest of this game. Not to say that they haven't been taking shots. They have 32 shots on goal, but... Get everything in on net now. Just try to funnel everything in on net, crash the boards, crash the net, try to pick up a dirty goal. Maryville wins the draw again. Poking at it is Henson. It's coming out of the zone, though. Back to Henson at the red line. He'll throw it in. The 
McKendry back for it. Another stretch pass, just like we saw last time. That's Anthony Stavro getting a stick on it. Going the other way, Karenji flips it in on net. That's a bouncing puck as Werner steers it wide. Karenji up to the top to the blue line, a shot on. And Werner's there, makes the save as Henson threw it on net, looking for his second of the game. It's fortunate that it, it kind of died on the pad and settled down nicely for him. Tack shoots one from the blue line, steered away once again by Werner. We've seen him pop out a couple of rebounds here and there as it goes the other way. McKendry coughed it up. Brexler trying to throw one towards Brad Boudreaux, comes behind the net. Boudreaux battling for it. Charche's there as well. Boudreaux comes up with it. Boudreaux behind the net, feeds it for Tack. It's in his skates, though. Tries to get the shot off. He can't. Good play by Tack, just trying to kick it forward as he intercepted that pass. That would have been a breakaway for McKendry. So a shot from the neutral zone goes off Ed Coffey. Cole Bonnet makes a stretch pass. It's now inside of McKendry's zone. A couple players tangled up in the corner, battling for the puck. Jaden Bexty throws it to Phil Kemmer. Kemmer backhands one on. It's blocked. Nikita Sokoff going the other way. Sokoff on Henson. Shot on. High. Maryville changes. It's thrown back in the zone. Amaregi's there. He's at the hash marks. He'll just spin off of Phil Kemmer as they battle for the puck at the half wall. It comes out in the slot. A shot on. Oh, right off the bar. Ivasenko. That one had eyes. 11.57 left to go. Almost made it a 5-2 game. And immediately will hop off of the ice. That was a bullet right the top of the slot. They don't call that the goaltender's best friend for nothing because that one's saving Evan Coffey and the Maryville Saints from falling down by three. I don't want to say that would have been a dagger, but the way that thing came off of Ivasenko's stick, that definitely could have put this game definitely out of reach. So... Stavro trying to make the stretch pass. Karenji with speed, beats the icing, heads up play, finding Bexty in the slot, and he can't connect. Bonnet spins away, throws it back in. Bexty leaves the puck for Henson. Henson on his backhand, can't get enough on it, and it's taken out by Brown. He flips it in. Henson back for it. Henson loses the puck behind the net. Regains possession, makes the stretch pass, goes off the stick of Karenji. He dives. Here's Prexler. Prexler loses the puck, spins, throws it back over to Karenji. A shot on and a big save by Warner. A glove save as he was sliding right. Karenji shot left. Still 3-2 or still 4-2 here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. That's the play that you want to set up, though. You want to get it going side to side, get the goaltender moving. They get the one-timer set up perfectly with a right-hand shot on the left-hand side, but it was met with a good save. Wesley Warner doing his best to keep this game at 4-2. to two. Cole Mudra at the red line, shoots it in, goes off the stick of Radke into the corner. McKendry with time and space, they fling it down the ice. It goes off of Lundquist and behind the net. Coffey throws it around the boards. With it now is Prexler. Prexler up the middle to Mudra, can't connect. It goes back the other way. Here's Lundquist, a two-on-one. Racing back is Alvagran, a shot on. It's loose, still in the slot. No one picked it up. And Ed Coffey with two saves right there at 10-26. The 10-26 mark. We're almost halfway through this third period. Ed Coffey still making some big saves, trying to keep this a two-goal game. Of course, there's some he wish he had back, but Maryville can't dwell on that now. That was very close to that first goal, the way it happened, the way the rebound just came a little too far for Coffey to correct. One of those, you know, do you, do you go out and grab it and risk it of being out of position? Or do you just wait? Here's Brad Boudreaux, a shot on. Werner's there again, trying to corral it. And, oh, going to the net hard was Jake Charche as he tried to get the rebound and put it past Wesley Werner. 
Warner was able to smother it. 10.08 left to go here in the third. The last game of the regular season. And then the ACHA National Tournament will be held right here at the Maryville University Hockey Center starting April 16th. Shot on, big save, Ed Coffey. That one is off the stick, perhaps a high stick. Amaregi was the one who had it, but Maryville plays it. Sent back into the zone. Under 10 left to go here in the third. Got to start showing a little bit of urgency here. Maryville looking a little bit out of sorts. Stretch pass, goes off the stick. It's a game of stretch passes. That one's off the skate of Amaregi. Bexty the other way. Bexty makes a move. Bexty in, shoots, save Warner. With it now, Ryan Radke hits the blue line, loses it at the red. Karenji floats it over to Bexty, but Bexty sort of went the other way and there's a shot on. And there's Ed Coffey putting a, a blocker and stick to the incoming Nordlander. That would have been interesting. We spoke of Jordan Bennington earlier putting a couple fake punches towards uh, the, the San Jose Sharks players, and we saw one right there from Ed Coffey. Just just keeping his distance, talk to the hand, keep away. <laughs> it's keeping him honest. So an, another pass goes off the stick, down for an icing call, 8.59 left here. 38 shots for the Saints, only managing two goals. Wes Werner, like you said, a complete different game than what we saw last night. Yeah, he's really just kept laser focus in this game. He's had a couple of rebounds here and there, as you mentioned, but nothing that Maryville's really been able to swoop in and take advantage of. Uh, but Maryville's really got to find themselves here. The stretch passes are great, but they need to start stringing something together with a little more possession. Bexty hits the red line with Stavro. That pass behind Stavro, he'll go back behind the net with a flying Bexty who wheels around the net. Henson steps up. Henson inside the blue line, whistle blown off sides. We see Jen Henson uh, jumping into the play, and I think despite the fact that Maryville's only got the five defenders, we're going to have to see a little more of that from their blue liners jumping into the offense. But you got to be kind of uh, conscientious of when you do it because you don't want to leave all that space in behind you either. So now we see Cole Mudra, and we've seen this before. Cole Mudra is now playing defense as well. So you have that big body on the back end. It's not his first rodeo on the back end. He's done it a few times, even dating back to last year. Here's Kyle Dunville. Dunville, who's the extra skater tonight, feeds it. Shot on by Harrison just wide. Rebound, it's behind the net. Dunville in on the forecheck. Comes around the net. McKendry looking to exit the zone. Another stretch pass. Stepping up is Bonnet. Bonnet at the red line. Feeds it for Albegran. Albegran in the slot. A shot on. It's off a stick. Sent back around by Trevor Rorick. Sokoff. Pass over to Proskurin. He's in again. Shot on. A save by Coffey. Albegran leaves it. Comes out of the zone. Chopping at it. It's going to come out of the zone again, and Harrison will throw it back into the zone. And now Bonnet has it up the middle, inside his own blue line. Whiffs on it, turns it over. Richardson's there with Amaregi. Henson poking at it. He can't get it. A couple dipsy doodles from Amaregi. Richardson, a shot and a save by Ed Coffey. And a penalty. And now Jack Harrison is wondering why he's heading to the box. It looks like both teams will take a seat inside the sin bin. That's Amaregi. He's been to the box a few times tonight. Yep. I suppose you can say the officials have been uh, keeping things even because it's another one of those that you, you call the embellishment, but you also give out the penalty as well. So no harm, no foul, as so they'll stay even strength. Yeah, things have been pretty even in the officiating tonight, other than the uh, phantom tripping call, as I'll call it. 
But the ice opens up four on four as Brad Boudreaux flips it in. Boudreaux on his backhand, using his body as protection. Comes up to the blue line. Henson slides it over to Tack. Tack fakes the shot. Got to get that to the front of the net. No one was there, though. I understand why he passed it. Boudreaux throws a stick on it. Henson, using his body, keeps it in. Henson stops, leaves it for Boudreaux. Boudreaux has time, a shot on, and that one is steered wide. Here's Tack, top of the blue line. Prexler in, shoots, blocker save. Comes loose, knocked away. It's kept in, though, by Henson. Henson stops, looks up. Nice area pass down to Josh Tack, who will go around the net on his backhand. Tack wheels around the zone, up top at the blue line. Feeds it back, and that one goes out of the zone, so McKendry able to get some fresh legs out on the ice. Prexler makes a move with the blue line. Prexler in, backhand, loses the puck. Chops it back. Stavro over to Henson. Henson stops. Patience throws it back. Cole Bonnet shot on. That one's just wide of the cage. A penalty coming. It's loose. And going down is Trevor Henson. A tripping call against McKendry. And with 5.49 left to play, four on three is where we're headed. Maryville, huge opportunity here. Yeah, you've got to find a way to capitalize on this because it, we've seen what the patience of the Maryville Saints can do is they just calmly held on to the puck there. They found the open man. They finally managed to put on enough pressure to draw the penalty. As we mentioned, they, they like to stretch it out, try to get those breakaway chances, but when they're patient with the puck, that's what they can accomplish, and now they need to pull out a, a power play goal because of it. We're going to see a lot of Cole Bonnet and Trevor Henson in these dying minutes. Right now, the full four forwards out there because of how many defensemen are not on the bench right now. And Simpson's gone. Jim Hunter as well. So the defense core dwindling down. So we got some forwards on there. So four on three. Maryville back into the offensive zone. Here's Karenji. Back door, pass, shot on. Oh, what a save by Warner. Ten seconds left to go. We're going back to five on four. Boudreaux fakes the shot. I don't know if he faked that or he just whiffed on it. But we are back to five on four now. Still a, a decent amount of time on the power play. Over one minute. Prexler stops at the red line, hits the blue, feeds it over to Henson. Henson on his backhand, uses his body, turns. And that's Proskurin coming up with it. Proskurin with speed. Ooh, tried to make a move on Christian Alvagran, who's a forward, not used to playing defense. Alvagran with speed behind the net. Throws it up top to Henson. Henson over to Karenji. Karenji whiffs on it, loses the handle of the puck. Off the skate back as Brown was the one showing pressure. Alvagran on his backhand, hits the blue line. Drops it for Prexler, back to Henson. Henson, a shot, it goes just wide. Jack Harrison can't get to it, and it's sent back down. Under 30 seconds to go here in the minor. Bexy hits the red line. Bexy enters into the zone. He loses his handle on the puck. Goes off the boards, kept in by Henson's skate, but sent back down. And if there's one last rush, it has to come quick because there's five seconds, four, three, and that'll pretty much do it for the Maryville power play. Under four minutes to go in this game. Maryville down by two. Boudreaux can't connect with Stavro. McKendry going the other way. Floating puck. It's loose, and Ed Coffey's there to make the snag. 3.29 left here in the third period. And that precious opportunity for Maryville has gone by the wayside. Yeah, just they couldn't really settle anything down. And, and credit has to go to the McKendry penalty kill. You, you really like to see that kind of determination when you're out there, you're shorthanded, you're trying to kill this game off. McKendry uh, slightly 
embarrassed by the fact that they allowed so many goals yesterday and they've really settled things down here this evening. So Josh Tack with the puck behind his own net. Tries to make the pass to Cole Bonnet. Goes off the skate and sent back in by McKendry. Tack back once again. Lots of, lots of uh, pressure coming from McKendry as that's Richardson. Gagan right at the red line, loses his handle on it. McKendry has it inside their own zone. It goes off the glass. Richardson with it. He looks up, puts it on the boards, still battling for it. Brown comes up with it. And Nordlander's going to throw it out of play into the Maryville bench with 2.41 left here in the third period. So, Todd, when you look at the, the ACHA rankings, Maryville, for the most part, has a good gap on McKendry, and they are 4-1 and one against them this year. If things turn out the way it looks right now, they'll be 4-2. and two. You still have to think that Maryville will have that top spot at the end of the year and grab the, the MCH automatic bid in the national tournament. Yeah, and, and Maryville's really kind of deserved it. This game notwithstanding, they've been the better team overall throughout the course of the year. They've had their bumps along the way, but uh, it, if they could clean up just a few things here or there, they could really turn into a dominant team. Henson steps up, back door, trying to feed Jack Harrison. Looks like he was tripped up by a stick. Comes out to the slot. Goes past Christian Alvagran. 2.05 left to go. He leaves it, but no one's there. Henson battling back. Proskurin will throw it down behind the net. Less than two minutes to go. Coffee leaves it for Alvagran. Got to wonder when Coffee's going to head to the bench. Alvagran at the red line. Here's Harrison into the zone. Comes on the half wall. Squirts out to the middle. McKendry will throw it out of the zone. D to D pass, Cole Bonnet. Got to think these guys are going to be out the rest of the game. Here's Brad Boudreaux behind the net, spins. He loses his footing, throws it out front. It's still loose, and Warner's able to make the snag. That was a quick whistle. There's been absolutely no motion to add coffee to come over to the bench. So I, I almost wonder if Coach Hogan's sending some sort of message that perhaps he's not pleased with the effort of his team and thinks that they need to try to see this one out five on five. That is a very interesting way of putting it because, you know, right now would have been a great opportunity to get him off the ice with that offensive zone faceoff. So perhaps we won't see Ed Coffey head to the bench. We'll see if this team can get things done five on five. They're down by two with one minute left to go. They have been pushing, but a couple defensive zone breakdowns. We almost saw one right there as well. That pass goes off the skate. Stavro chipping at it, can't get it by. McKendry unable to get it out of the zone. Brown throws it back behind the net. McKendry will send it around. Comes up top to Bonnet. Bonnet a shot on. That one's wide of the cage. Boudreaux tangled up. Comes out. Flipped out. 35 left to play here in the third period. So interesting move. Not pulling the goalie. And an icing has been called. So three players, three players have been exited from this game. So now you're running on low fuel for this Maryville team. We've seen the same guys out there that pretty much the entire third period. And that was kind of the worry when they killed off that five on three, how much gas were they gonna have in the tank? Because you had some of your leaders out there killing that penalty. And then all of a sudden you get into the, the flow of the game and the tempers get flared and everything. Uh, but so yeah, they've, they've really put a lot of energy into this game, but it wasn't necessarily directed the way that you would like. So 20 seconds left to play. Barring any miracle, McKendry's gonna come out with a win tonight, a two on one down low. Prosker into this front, and that is steered away by Sokoff. In the slot, it's intercepted. Four seconds left, three, two, and one. 
Well, that'll do it from tonight as McKendry comes up with the victory, a 4-2 win, three unanswered goals, and a tough loss for Maryville to end their regular season. You have to think this team will play again in the national tournament, but that is a conversation we're going to have to have here in a little bit. What are your uh, what are your thoughts before we go into our final thoughts after the break? Well, it's a, a disappointing end. Obviously, you never like to lose a game, especially at the end of the year. Uh, but I think there's going to have to be serious discussions uh, between teammates, maybe even the coach involved. The way that this game transpired, uh, Ed Coffey was not happy at all. He went straight to the locker room, didn't want to do the stick taps, didn't want to have any words with his teammates in terms of oh yeah you had a good game sorry we didn't play well enough in front of you he just went straight off so um ed coffee played pretty well i mean there was maybe one goal that he might want to have back made some big saves kept his team in the game there just wasn't enough concerted effort uh as a team by maryville throughout this 60 minutes to pick up a victory here tonight well stick around we're going to recap the rest of this game Right after the break, a 4-2 victory for the McKendry Bearcats. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. College hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus, determination, strategy, and poise. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart, skill, and passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. Hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. The American Collegiate Hockey Association. More than just a game. At Wassa Homes, we understand building a home may seem complicated and stressful. That's why we created a simple three-step building process, so you don't have to feel confused or overwhelmed. We've been building homes for 50 years, and our customers know at Wassa Homes, we build your way with a firm price and on time. 100% panelized construction and 100% custom. Start the process by visiting us online at wassahomes.com to see our floor plans. Well, welcome back to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. An unfortunate loss for the Saints today. 4-2 against the McKendry Bearcats. Todd, what did you see from the Saints tonight? I thought they came out. They had a decent amount of jump at the beginning of the game. I think that Omeregi goal really kind of took a lot of their momentum away. Um, it was a game to where I think Maryville wanted to have a mirror image of what they did yesterday, where they just kind of spent the first period feeling things out, built throughout that first 20 minutes, and McKendry wasn't interested in doing that. They wanted to come out. They had a lot of good jump right off the get-go. They got that first goal. That gave them a good, some good momentum. Maryville stole it back, took a 2-1 to one lead, but ultimately I think the Saints got too caught up in the physicality of the game, too caught up in the emotions. That was one of our keys to the game yesterday was play with passion but not emotion. They did the opposite here tonight, did the Saints, to where they got caught up in all that extracurricular activity. It cost them in terms of the manpower they had on the ice, and ultimately it cost them the game, I think, in the result. Yeah, in that second period, that's when things kind of went off the rails. And after that Quentin Stemple penalty shot goal, we, you know, we, we had to think, wow, this team has a lot of momentum heading into the intermission, and it just seemed like 
things just started to fall apart, defensive zone breakdowns, which is one of the things that we touched on through, throughout the broadcast, and some of the things that this team has definitely worked on since the beginning of the season. They've done a much, much better job, but it seemed like that was uh, what was their downfall in tonight's game. Yeah, I think it was a – you don't want to say a lack of focus, but I think they were focused on the wrong things, whereas yesterday it was – we talked about it, retribution instead of revenge. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of switched a around a little bit in this game to where it was like, okay, we got the win yesterday, let's take them out. And I, not necessarily in any kind of cheap shot kind of way, but mm -hmm. they were focused, as we mentioned. There were a couple plays where they weren't even interested in the puck. They were going for the body. They wanted to kind of put a little salt in the wound, take out the rival heading into the postseason play. And ultimately, I think they just got focused on the wrong things. As you mentioned, uh, they had the 2-1 to one lead going into the second period. And then with uh, McKendry kind of gathering themselves, they had the energy in that second period. And that's what really swung this game. And it's not like the Saints didn't have any golden opportunities. Werner, on the other end, played a fantastic game. And the Saints just couldn't get really anything by him. Yeah, I mean, you get 41 shots on goal, which is, I think, what they finished with. You think you're going to get more than two goals in behind the goaltender. But Warner, as I mentioned during the broadcast, collected himself after being pulled. That's always embarrassing for a goaltender. Doesn't matter if it's for a momentum swing or because you're not playing well. A goalie never likes to be taken out of the net. That's his net when mm -hmm. he's put in it. So he managed to have a big rebound game. Uh, he was fortunate on a couple plays, but sometimes you get the bounces, and Maryville couldn't get the bounces. Ed Coffey played a good game, but the bounces didn't go his way, and ultimately in the goaltending battle, McKendry gets the victory. So McKendry does get the victory. as a split this year, or this this uh, this weekend, and Maryville comes out with four wins against McKendry this season. McKendry has two. So when you look towards the tournament, the way that ACHA has things lined up with the MCH conference, it's whoever is ranked highest in the rankings gets that automatic bid. You have to think the the way that Maryville played against McKendry and against Midland that they would be that team to come out as the automatic qualifier, especially when they're hosting the tournament. Yeah, and logic sex that <laughs> says that will happen. We'll see what happens when the official rankings come out. And the only reason I say that, it, it is a little bit of a jab, but – uh, we saw the rankings change over the weekend to where a couple plays, uh, a couple wins for some teams that weren't necessarily doing all that hot, and then all of a sudden they jump around. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I if the ranking, uh, the people that are doing the voting feel that McKendry all of a sudden switched things, something could be thrown awry, a wrench could be thrown in the works. Based on the entire body of work, though, I find it hard to believe that you're going to give a team that finished 500 the nod over one it, it finishes 10 and 6, and Maryville was the best team in the conference this year. And I mean, that's not always going to be the case year to year. Collegiate hockey has a lot of ebbs and flows, but I would think Maryville's going to feel hard done, as you mentioned, definitely being the host if they're not included based on the rankings. Especially with Maryville having that five game win streak heading into tonight. Unfortunately, that game, that win streak has been snapped. And unfortunately, it was the last regular season game of the year. But we're hoping to see them back here at the Maryville University Hockey Center in April. And that would mean they're in the national tournament. So um, for us, I mean, this is our, our last regular season game. It's been a it's been a fun year. Yeah, there's been ups and downs for us, just the same as there has been on the players. Uh, we've all kind of tried to stick up for each other, cover each other when we've had other stuff going on. And uh, it's been a fun year, and I hope that we get to continue it in the postseason. Absolutely. Well, we thank all of you for tuning in this entire year watching Maryville Saints hockey. It's been a fun ride. Let's hope it continues here in April. So once again, I'm Andrew Marsh alongside Todd Panula, Eric Skelton, and all of everybody within the MSHN team. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for watching Maryville Saints Hockey right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association.